Welcome everyone to the Madison County Public Library. Today is Meet the Artisan Day, and her art, Esther Randall, is, her art has been in the display case all month, and today we get to learn all about the art and about her. So, everyone welcome, Esther Randall. Yay! Hello. Um, well, I do, I got my MFA in sculpture. But I also, I do two forms of art. I do sculpture and I do drawings. And these are drawings um, in the case. And I'll tell you a little bit about the influences that my art have, what I think about, who I think about when I draw. Um, and this is a list, I'll show you their work. But Barry Gelt was my professor. And uh, Cheryl McRoberts is a close friend. And I'll point the other two. I think when I was in graduate school, I mean, he continues to inspire me about not how to do art, but um, because he works very differently from the way I do. He's much more a media person, and that is he takes, he's a painter, and he likes these are his weight of water uh, series, and he layers the paint on so they have a visceral weight to them, and he's very paint-oriented. Um, he inspires me. He always inspires me not to take shortcuts, not to take the easy way, and to be myself. Um, very inspirational. And I think his work is just absolutely beautiful. The top one um, I just fell in love with, and I think that's one of my favorite paintings, where you look at it and you see it's an abstract, and then you look longer and you realize that there are two islands that are emerging from and that's something that I really like, is the idea of not showing something very right off, but making your viewer look for it. Um, second influence is my dear friend Cheryl McRoberts, and she studied with me under uh, Barry Gelt, and she is a very media person. I always envy how she can, what I mean that is the brush strokes are very loose and free, and she does clay sculptures, they're very... Um, very sympathetic to the marks that she makes in the play. She inspired me uh, for, because she began drawing outside. All of these are done outside, and I being lazy and being somewhat a creature of comfort, I stay in and draw pictures. <laughs> and then I realized that that drawing from life is much more difficult, much more challenging. I tell my students that that it's already been translated from three dimensions into two dimensions. And I'll say more about that later, but you know, I just, I was blown away by her drawings um, that she's, when she started drawing outside, this is the Japanese garden. Um, outside she teaches at Normandale Community College and sister city in Japan uh, gave this garden to them. And I like showing them, it also I show them to my students with the sight lines that she, she builds up this web of lines, but really she's judging the distance between one object and another object and drawing the space in between the objects. And so here are some of my drawings. I start with went on sabbatical and I, I started drawing from life again under her inspiration. One of my favorite topics was to sit on my couch and look out my eye patio doors at what was happening with on my patio and I, I enjoy, they're not great drawings in fact I sit down and think I, I, I'm not making product here I am just it's like push-ups it's like using the rowing machine I'm just practicing developing my eye and getting information from the world and, and not worrying about the product now, the other people that have influenced and I think about with my work, uh, one is uh, the Dutch painter Jacob Riesdale. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, and I always loved him. I love the Dutch painters. I love Rembrandt for another reason. But the sense of light in this, the dramatic sense of light, and the big overarching sky, and uh, because they live in such a dark country, you know, overcast, light becomes very important, color becomes very important when it happens. Um, and so you, you get these things, and I know when I drive from 
home to work and it's cloudy and the skies part, you see a field that's really brilliant in the distance. That's the kind of thing that just sets my heart afloat. I just love it. Um, you know, I'm from looking at him. I look at him and I feel like, hmm, connection, you know, uh, of a soul made here. Here's another one. I had fun going online looking at these images. So just gonna... Then this um, Martin He, again, is another influence. I saw him, you know, a long time ago. Uh, I think it was a Metropolitan New York. I'm not sure where it, this one is. You know, been to as many museums as I've been. It's hard to remember who did what where. But I bought a poster of this, and it still hangs in my office, although it's faded beyond endurance. I look at it every day, and I love it. And I loved it primarily because of, um, well, one thing is the compositional element of the black water, which is an oval, and it's echoed by the gray sky above it. Uh, and then the diagonal line of the cloth, the buoy, and the sail. And then the other cross diagonal that's created by the look of the man and his dog going across the other way. And that composition had got me. But then I love the irrational use of light, uh, the impossibility of what happens here. Uh, that it, it is not normal lighting circumstance. Here are a couple more of his. I love how he uses white as just these markers to move the eyes the canvas. Uh, David Casper Friedrich is another one, and that uh, is, and he's not quite my favorite, but he's the one I've long known the longest. And he also, it's this idea of the relationship to nature. Um, this is one I haven't seen before, but it's a single fi figure uh, looking at nature, and nature is not the passive element. This is deep with a romantic mind, that nature itself is a, a tremendous force, um, and it is to be respected. And you'll have these ideas of confronting the sublime, and the sublime is something that is just uh, beyond the normal experience. It can be sublimely good, or it can be sublimely bad. You know, nature doesn't care, <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, a massive flood is sublime, a thunderstorm is sublime, and it can be thrilling or not so thrilling if you get hit by lightning. And so you have this figure who is humble, or I'm putting words in her mouth, but confronting that. And here's, this one is uh, very well known, that deals with the notion of the sublime and the power of nature. And nature is, you know, a character, personality. This is one I hadn't seen before. I found it. I just went, oh, good. <laughs> Pitting my poor students. I, 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 when I go looking for images, I always pack it with ones that excite me and make my program too long. This is Monk by the Sea. And I like that because it has, you know, this tiny little monk again that you have a hard time seeing. You have to look for. And that's another element that I like to put in my work. I like to hide the things. El Greco, and this is one that, I, you know, I don't channel him particularly. We do the same thing, and I think that is the notion of the ecstatic landscape, you know, the landscape that is alive. Also, that it's at night <laughs> appeals to me, but it is as though there were something going on that charged every cloud, every leaf, every brick wall. It fairly undulated. And that's, that's an idea that I carry into my work, is that the landscape is not passive, but there is something going on that animates it, a spirit. Okay, this is an old pe per one of mine. It's Capriccio Island. And I drew it when I was, um, when I got tenure. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, it's, it's rough being in higher ed today. It really is rough, and it's even rougher when you have an MFA in sculpture. And to get tenure is like the difference between earning a living or working, you know, at you know, McDonald's, 
you know, uh, it's it's that when you make the choice. So it it has the image of me being washed ashore on the island. And at that time, I did have a map, and this was a screensaver. The the island was the screensaver, so I took a picture of my screensaver and, and used it as the basis. And then, of course, Crow and the volcano are my totemic selves. You know, I like collecting a lot. Um, Oliver can attest. I, I like things. <laughs> I like things that are irrational, and I'm always bringing rocks and love molds and depression glass home. You know, so. Um, so this, and these would take a long time. I'd build up. I'd do on like 19 by 25 sheets of Canson paper, and um, it'd be like one a semester. It'd take me a long time to draw that big. Is this still a prism color? Hmm? Is this a prism color, too? Yeah. They're all prism color. Now, were the other, what mediums, like the very first person you talked about? Okay, was his was oil was paint. His was oil, okay. Um, uh, yeah, his was oil, very good, does oil paint. But I can really see his. Right. I can see him in your work. So, you know, there's definitely. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. thank, Probably thank more than you. the other ones. <laughs> thank you very yeah. much. And then Cheryl, um, she's a sculptor, too. She does painting, but not as much, but she, uh, I don't paint, but um, she, that was ink and wash. Oh, yeah. And you're doing Christmas color? Yeah. And what is that? That is a wax pencil. I'm oh. sorry. That is, you know, just you go to you know, Michael's and you right. go and get a number of colors for it. I usually do. Do they look like colored pencils? Yeah, they're colored pencils. That looks like a they're colored pencils. pencils. Okay. okay, sorry. It's, it's just upgraded color. Right. Pencil. Yeah. Seems like it's way harder. Than painting. People tell you that? It is it is, it is way harder hard. because right? I have one little dot and I can only do what the paint of the dot wants and I learned a long time ago that I don't like blending them because um, they get build up and get waxy and that becomes a problem and you have to work around that and sometimes I think this would be a heck of a lot easier if I painted it. Mm -hmm. But then <laughs> it's been so long since I've painted I've kind of I'm a little intimidated by that brush, that giving brush. But so as long as the colors that were blended, they're layers? Yeah, they're layers. Sometimes, I, and I work in a quasi pointillist style. Okay. Of, no of, is, okay. of pointillism is like Syrah, where okay. um, you don't mix the colors, but you put two colors side by side and make marks and build it up and your eye blends them. And that keeps the purity of the color, and you don't um, get the waxiness. Hmm. Sometimes the waxiness, I use it to my advantage, but you know, you are have there, to. Are there any videos out there of you doing this? Of me doing it? Yeah. Doing there are videos. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't ask him. I would love to see it. Yeah. You know, it, it's very boring. It's like watching paint dry. Well, okay. when I'm Never mind the video. Then. <laughs> right, it is. Uh, so, what, it, what size is a lot of your work? This one, well, I'll get to the, this one for a long time. I did the standard, you know, piece of Canson paper, you know, it's, it's like 19 by 25 inches. Okay. This is one that, you know, I did a long time ago. It's called Eric's Green. And, I, you know, I, I've taught art appreciation, so. You know, I have a, a fair sense of art history, and um, this is a Bruegel painting about the fall of Iscarius, and I always liked his work. I like his work, too. Um, and so when my brother told me about the dream he had about our father floating away in the ocean, you know, I thought, oh, I'd like to do that. And so it's very tiny up there. Is, is there the arrow? Oh, yeah. There we go. There's my brother, and there's my father. And then I made it autobiographical. I changed the foreground. This was my dog, Cisco. And there's a figure representing me. And over here on the bay was, you know, scenes from Aiken where I grew up. There's a horse track. And over here, here's my house. Oh, Peter, go back. <laughs> and uh, over here is Berea College, scenes from Berea College, you know, with, with Berea. Bria has been very, very good to us. Mm -hmm. And so, 
it takes a long time to do those things. And I remember driving home from Lexington with Oliver and I was just looking at the sky going, I like that sky. And I start drawing from my imagination just to, I always feel insecure about it. I think, well, I, I, I'm doing these other drawings and I want to get a product. I want to get things and it doesn't hamper me. But if I draw from my imagination, maybe I'll be looser with my marks and build up things. Didn't happen. I went back to my own ways. But, you know, I, you know, there are things that are happening in here that it's my, it's, it's my commute from Richmond to Berea, back and forth, that you know, I'm always looking at and being absorbed by the landscape. I mean, it, it's so, these are and like my interpretation, and I, I love the idea, especially when you're in winter, you're coming home and there's a light in the distance. You know, uh, it indicates things that, that are happening, you know, that every light you see is somebody's universe. You know, so there are all these little independent universes. And then I was teaching criticism at the time, and that is, uh, of course, on art theory you know, for seniors. Uh, and we in class had talked about how the intersection between words and uh, how I can make you, I as the artist, can direct how you see something. Um, if something's untitled, Titled untitled, it doesn't mean that the artist is doesn't want uh, it isn't courageous enough to give it a title. What it means is, I want you to look at it in terms of line, shape, form, and color. You know, and that's a modernist tone. That that is like abstract. That's that's what you do. But if I come up and it's obviously a landscape, I could name it anything. I just put nightscape there because of the top one because, you know, it's a nightscape. But then I thought, well, what happened? You know, so in here we have the night she left and I have a little car showing up and all these things, woo. Um, you know, that you have to really look to see the road. You know, there's the sky, the cloud, and everything's very close together in color. And then I put in little details to reward you for looking because it's the way we experience things there. Is this one out of the case? It might be. Come in. But for those who don't know, you're at EKU. Right, I'm at EKU. Hi. How long have you been there? Oh, gosh. I can see full time and As they say on Facebook. Okay, so, you know, this. And this one is another one out of my imagination. And, you know, it, it kind of, you know, the Bellingers, I, I was kind of remembering how it felt out Red Lake Road going up to their uh, property there. And then I erased something that I didn't like, and I thought, well, oh, that's kind of cool. So, you know, it's, it's just. <laughs> so. Now, then I think, oh, this night things fell apart. I saw a movie a long time ago, um, Blue Velvet, and this is another part of my thinking, is that it was a uh, David Lynch film. I'd never see it again. I was glad I saw it. I loved it. But it was about, you know, really bad guys who had kidnapped these people, and they were driving all around a small Oregon town, and they didn't realize that, you know, even like in bucolic Berea, where things are just great at my house, you know, somewhere else in the city, life is hell for them. You know, there are things people are going through, so all these individual universes we have going on, you know, it's a variety of experiences for everyone. So I kind of, there's kind of a sinister theme that goes through you know, I like creating something of real beauty. I think they're beautiful. Uh, real subtlety, but also a sinister layer underneath. Suggestion. Now, you know, I, I look at a lot of art, and I love a lot of art. I love a lot of different things. And these I just pulled off Facebook. Uh, you know, uh, 
people send things and say, look at this. And this, this is, I love, this is more like the way Barry Gelb works, where landscape is the subject that, um, that you want to deal with, but you want to do it abstractly. So it's not important that you know where it is or how it is. Uh, it's not particularly telling you a story. You look at it as a relationship of colors and shapes. I think that's the first Morandi I've ever seen that wasn't bottles. Right, yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it was kind of exciting to see. And this is Monk. And, uh, you know, this had the same kind of generalization, although it sparkles, and I do love things that sparkle, paintings that sparkle. Um, but I, I've kind of taken a detour from that, and that's a pretty classical way of approaching landscape that you see a lot. And by that, I don't mean that it's not. It's a, it's a way that became very traditional in the 20th century of abstracting the landscape, using the landscape as abstract in a way you, uh, when you abstract something, you simplify it to its essential forms. But I begin to get in love with detail, and I've always been a detailed person. Um, I went back to photographing my sites, and this is actually uh, Duchanan, the Duchanan Road exit right up here at the farm. If you're going up, it's just off the road I got off. And, photograph this and uh, then I become excited by you know little details like oh there's a house over there or there's a structure here and this is a particular tree that's there and I want to get the, the fact of that tree and this is an idea that's becoming very important to me is the fact of something uh, that it is there. Um, is that a plane up high? That it's is, well, you know, that is, again, I like ambiguity. Okay. And so, so what it is, is the night of the new world, so whoops, so I, you know, I like using my, uh, those two, they're just lights. And then there is, I did put that, that's not an eraser, that's, that's, that's meant to be there, it's not like the other one. But I like <laughs> putting odd lights in there, and so if you go out and say, well, you know, there's a UFO, you know, it must be the UN coming for us, you know, that's, that's why I, and that amuses me. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, there are a lot of little jokes. And, um, I was working with Gallery on Main and they're doing uh, Shaped by Water. They do that every once in a while when I associated with them. I redid really this drawing up and I, I had a photograph and this is actually, uh, 25, it's, it's above the Kentucky River. It's kind of collapsed a little, to get it in. Um, but here it is at, at night, and I was very specific about the trees and the branches. It almost looks like fish eye. Yeah, fish eye right. Yeah. And then, I, you know, my subject of my work is, you know, it's always the drive back and forth between work. And I love the college farm, and I've done it twice, and the lower one is um, the apparition of Pepper at the college farm. And Pepper was my mother's horse when she was growing up, she grew up on a farm. And then when I tell my kids stories when they were little, Pepper was a characteristic character in it. So I thought, well, and Pepper's long gone. <laughs> but so I, you know, and then the element of the uh, clouds as expressive, and this is what you see from um, the El Greco, it, I take a lot of pictures of clouds. And so uh, that becomes this is ecstatic um, event that is not normal. What would be the word? I can't think of it. It's just uh, almost a spiritual experience or whatever. And then, the, then I had, I was thinking again and shifted slightly and then had fun with titles and uh, that was a configuration of the college farm. Uh, <coughs> And then, um, <laughs> so this is another one is specific. This is, you know, the, at 595, the exit where you get off, but I get off at night, and um, liking the idea of cars coming, and it, you know, just almost dark, and then, again, I wanted to get the sense of, the sinister thing, and, you know, my sense of humor is, you know, well, what's the most uh, 
traumatic thing besides the earth opening up is that my mother got drunk. So <laughs> um, that's what the title was. <laughs> to try to get the sense of, uh, something that wasn't extraordinary. The extraordinary versus the ordinary. This again is uh, coming along here. This is uh, again along uh, 75 where I got along the road and took a picture. I see spaces and I fall in love with them. And you, know, you go along and see landmarks and things and I look at it as it goes. And I mean, this is going back to he with the, the idea of um, lighting situations that are extraordinary. And then uh, this is, I went behind, uh, one of my sons was working at a uh, land of acres of land. Acres of what? Acres of land. Land of acres. Acres, acres of land. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and so I went up there and saw this beautiful landscape behind it and um, photographed it. And this is this is the night of the escape. I didn't put that one. And again, this is, and you know, I mean, this is getting back to what's happening in books. I'm not a Mac person, folks. I'm not a, I'm a Mac person. Uh, I, you know, it's, and these ideas of the detail of everyday life, I go back to when I had my sketchbooks, it's fun to go through because I can tell what's happened in my life. Like the lower drawing, uh, Oliver tripped over a stool and I, you know, had to put it up on a chair out of the way until I could get around to fixing it. So I knew that that was an event in our life. Um, the upper one is, that's my son's um, water bottle that he takes with him everywhere. He keeps hydrated. So I go through and I can tell, just like in the previous two drawings, what's winter and what's summer, and going through and these little details that continue the story. There's a little bit of a story, a little bit of information about what's happening in life, and I love that kind of detail where you have things in there that portend of activity, remind you of the possibility of things are happening um, here. I mean, even having the lampshade at a tilt is important to me to say, oh, yeah, at that time somebody walked through, knocked it, and left the lamp with a tilt. This is so I come up, and, and coming up here, these, it's, these are the, I think of it as the drama of everyday life, these little things that happen. So I'm not only looking at landscape, but now I'm looking at what's happening on the side of the road. I mean, there are exciting things. You know, one day I was driving up 25 toward Richmond, and there was this guy just sitting in the weeds with his backpack, and he had, you know, leaning with his eyes looking for, you know, if central casting, a photographer, I thought that is almost artificial the way he's sitting. It's so perfect, and it just burrowed in my mind. Up at the cemetery, Madison Garden Cemetery, you know, one day I saw a guy walking with a, a cross on his back. You know, not a heavy one. It looked like pink plastic on mounted on plywood, and he was carrying it, walking. I saw him two days, and then the other day I, I saw a man with crutches with the same thing. And that's the kind of interesting stuff that goes along. Uh, that I, I'm looking at these these stories that are happening, you know, it's really rich along 25. You see interesting people happening there that I can infuse, use that action in my work. And so, I, I, you know, like the guy right over here you have to look for, I did several drawings trying to get them. One day I was coming home and somebody had a fire at night by the side of the road and I always wanted to use that. And so finally I got it in there. Not as big as I wanted, but that's okay. I mean, I changed my mind. <laughs> and then right here. This one is, you know, Night of the Big Game is hidden over in the corner near the uh, fir trees, the cedars, is, you know, I, I did see an accident and I did see a woman, it's hard to see, and I intended that way, I want you to have to look, was a woman, a middle-aged woman holding up a boy a young man, and he's leaning against her calves into her knees, and so I, I recreated that in this drawing. I really did see that, but not at this, not at this location. 
I do a lot of lying in my work. This is uh, from the Bellinger's balcony, you know, overlook, from Crescent Drive overlooking. And, you know, just one time I, I was driving home and I saw a knot of clouds and I thought, oh, I want to do something like that. And so and I always wanted to do something from uh, the view, from Crescent Circle. And then right here, it's, I've been doing nightscapes, and lately I've been moving into the day. And I was, this was at Charlotte Airport, and you know, I was landing and waiting to go into the terminal, and I saw this pipe coming out, and I actually did see that, and I photographed it, you know, with the pipe coming out. And then I invented this, this thing that, it's structurally, it's there for a compositional reason, but also emotional reason, and that is what what's happening with the fire, you know, what's what's that disaster in the background. Uh, going up to work, I, I love, uh, there are two trees in this farm that's for sale on 25, and, you know, going up there, and I love those trees. I revisit them. Um, I like saying good morning to them as I pass. <laughs> And so this is, and this one's the first one I did with him, the relationship between them, and um, actually the vision was Oliver when he was a boy, swore he saw a monkey on a cow, and you know, you know, I believe him. <laughs> um, and so I, I always wanted to do a drawing of it, so I set it with this. Actually, it should be South Carolina landscape, but it's Kentucky, it's good old Kentucky, with these two trees and their relationship. And I, so I'm beginning to really like odd little places. And so we have, uh, like, Button across from Walgreens, New Walgreens in Richmond. You know, if you go that back driveway, you can look up the road and see the castle. And I thought, oh, I love this. You know, so, and then, so I went online, got uh, an image of a homeless person and put him there, and, you know, that's the beggar outside the castle. And, uh, you know, likewise, knowing why I do this, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's going down between, you know, like if you go to Kroger's and you want to go across to Office Max, you know, and there are two culverts, and I thought, those are interesting shapes. Those are nice. And so I, I did a drawing there, and I was looking for something else on face, you know, on, online, and I saw this image of a naked man running, and I thought, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, before this, and I want to talk to you a little bit about how, how I get my images, and then I'll, I'll shut up. But um, I did this thing like, I, to do my job, I had to learn how to use Photoshop and design cards. And then I started looking, you know, in my morning cup of coffee, look at the grounds and think, that's a really neat. And I started photographing them and putting them together in Photoshop and uh, making these landscapes, these dystopian landscapes where I imagine what's going to be next after post-human. And there's always, and I'd like to get my Thing. There's always a little person <coughs> that I, I put in a photograph of a little wanderer that is the one, like the scapegoat, you know, that travels the earth endlessly, living with the result of uh, what humans did. And the, the fun thing is, is that you can read, these are two images that I save it as another file and do another pose and change it around. It, help, it really helps me. In, in the old days, artists used to do studies, and now they generate their ideas from Photoshop. Um, so, here are these. That I, I started doing by adding later groups in Photoshop and distorting and doing different things to them. And, you know, at first they were just abstract, but then they, you know, I, you are what you see, and I live in Kentucky, and I see the hills, and that's you know, is part of my life. And I like getting individual little things that I, I show as what kind of life forms would come after, after us, maybe. 
think you can kind of see the guy over there on the far on your left walking through. So this idea of how, you know, using Photoshop uh, is how I do this, is I take a picture like this is, you know, again, one of my little friends that I, I say hello to on my way into town, and I always photograph uh, clouds. And then I Photoshop one into the other as a way of dealing with ideas. And then I can reuse it. This one I don't have the Photoshop where I change the color of the clouds, but I use it to do a different variation on it. Okay, and that's it. So that's that's what I do, that's what I've been working on. Did you start off early in your when did you start doing this kind of drawing? The prisoner and how I don't, yeah, when I first knew you, I just knew you as a sculptor. Yes. That's all I'd ever seen, that's just what I thought you did. And then one day you brought, you brought to the gallery, I think it was a photograph of the, the, the coffee mug. The, oh, the you know, coffee skin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, and then, and then I started seeing the prisma color. I just wonder well, what, what always, the order that I've was. I've always or? done, I think I started prisma color because we moved into our present house. I used to do more variety, but. We had carpet in the house, and I didn't want to get the carpet dirty for the best of reasons. And um, so I just, I just, you know, it's something I could do, it could stay. And I've always done sculpture and gone back and forth between them. Sculpture, um, I usually do. I've gone into the world of stuff. I usually do at um, EKU because my welder's there and the hoist and facilities that they that I can use. Um, but when I this is what I do at home. And it depends on what I'm feeling like and what idea that you know I'm going. Right now I'm I'm more kind of jazzed about I have other ideas in the pipeline, other you know, things that want to be drawn. So I'm not doing the sculptures so much. But I've always done this. So as part of your process, you're playing with the images in Photoshop, mm -hmm. try different colors and so forth, and then you use that kind of as your... Yeah, I, I print them off. I, I print them off and use them, and I use a grid system. I used to, used to, I had an opaque projector and I started, you know, projecting them and I thought, uh, that that's hurting my drawing skills, so... At least I'm drawing them from a photograph and not projecting the photograph of them again. Uh, just so I, and I, I still I teach drawing and I draw not as much as I want to draw, but you know, I draw from life. You know, and, that, uh, and I, I tell my students, you know, photographs, you know, they, they are kind of like you go outside and smoke a cigarette and come in and try to act like you didn't smoke a cigarette and smell like that. And a, a drawing done from a photograph always has the odor of a photograph. You know, I, I don't think you can, and that's the compromise. That's, that's why I respect and love Sean Robert so much, is that her work has a kind of authenticity of being there on the spot, directness. But I, I like telling a story more than she does. And I like changing things around, and so this is this is what I do. It's compromising. So you would do a pencil sketch to get this building, for example, and kind of a plan for where you're going, and then you just start applying the color. Uh, you know, well, like in this, like back here, this one's pretty close to what the photographs are like. Uh -huh. You know, I can I can do things like change the contrast. I'm not all that proficient in Photoshop, but I can do change the contrast, dim the color, get think about those ideas. When I came in here, I think I did a something with the reverse. I, I took the Photoshop and did the sky differently with that and played with that, like you know, 
I don't use filters or anything, but I think I do in color lots of Yes, but this is not Prismacol. This is actually one of your digital colors, right? No, this is Prismacol. That's Prismacol, okay. And another thing that I've decided going with, I used to work on the Canson paper, and I didn't like that. I've gone to illustration board, kind of a light gray. But now I've gotten copied markers and uh, do almost like a little watercolor or a marker drawing first underneath it. So um, just to get rid of the color of, you know, if I have something and it's dark gray, I don't want over it. There's always a recess and I want it darker. So I kind of play with laying down the color scheme with that. Just to, and part of that is just to practice with the proper markers because I'm not good with them. What kind of marker is this? C-O-P-I-C. -C. And that's, uh, you can get them at uh, Michael's and the other place. And you can get, you know, they blend. So they're better better than like Sharpie or anything like that. Like if you do a marker and you lay down and there's the lines and one mark doesn't blend in with the other. I don't like that. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. So you can have a blender and things like that. And I'm, that's where I'm going with that. It's doing a, a pre, it's kind of a wash going to think about color scapes. And that. But those are usually tunnel and then I come up with the color on top of that. I, guess I, I start like from in the middle of the gray scale and that their way if I put white down it's going to be white and if I put black down it's going to be black whereas if you know you start with white you know I can take a marker you know a, a green and it's going to be dark green on white but if I do it on the gray it looks lighter and so um, so you know it's like some of these light prism colors that I use you know really show up nicely on the gray Whereas it'd be darker than I wanted on. So I'm a bit technical. No, no, that's right. yeah. it's an interesting concept. The perception between what's happening with the background yeah. and really the color. Yeah. That darker side of some of your pictures, like the night man that I've drawn, those. Where is that coming from, the dark? Do you like watch a lot of murder mysteries and things like that? Or? I'll have to ask my husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's her family. It's her family. family. It's family stuff, okay. Is it primarily in the evenings when you're driving back and forth? Yeah. It's, you know, I, I moved into the dayscape because, of, you know, I just love light. I like the dramatic effects of light. And, you know, you know, I just love the, I'm always, I'm going to wreck someday, I'm looking at the landscape. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for new scenes and new dramas. And if you don't see it, you will draw it. Oh, that's there. The naked man in the cover. He was there. Maybe? Uh, yeah, no, 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 he wasn't. But, you know. In your mind? No. Um, and that, that's the other thing that, you know, in, in art, you know. Now I can't go in front of Kroger or any of those and or not picture, I will always picture a naked man running <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> but really, you know, the car will be going, why are you snickering? Long you know, story. Like it's, it's a long better. story. You know, I, and this is the interesting thing about art, you know, like in the modern You just made they that wanted... culvert interesting to me. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like the viewer has the power now to say what you see in this. Like if, if you see this and it's still closed, you know, you, you know, you get to say what the story is behind it. And I want that ambiguity. I want you to have your own explanation why that man is there. You know, the possibility. I feel like I need to go back and look at any work I've seen of yours. Because I really yeah. know I'm supposed to be looking for hidden figures, you know, and things well, like that. Yeah. I don't really think of it. I get, 
as a viewer, I get lazy because I'm used to the artist. Boom! Here it is. Yeah. You know, you get used to that. So it's 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 lovely to think I have to look, I have to be engaged with the art, and it's very easy to be passive. Yeah. yeah. So it's wonderful. Where are you from? I grew up in South Carolina to Yankee parents. My mother's from Indiana, my father's from Indiana. Yeah, you don't have a Southern accent. I don't have a Southern accent. I don't know what kind of accent I have. It's Yankee. London. <laughs> so is this the real move, the real art, or the fake art? I'm not sure it's art, but this is, this is a drawing. This is the sister drawing to the one out there. This one's in a show. Well, I was trying to juxtapose, juxtapose that with the news that's going on over there. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Alternative. alternative. I, I would say this is an alternative universe. <laughs> you, could be, you could be safe. It's something different about this one too. The other ones, I can see that I've seen those images somewhere. You know, the clouds and the, the, the colors. These colors I've not seen before. The other ones, I thought, look more, I mean, these were natural. Color. Right. But this yeah. one is, you've stepped out of that. Is this, is that something new? Or is, yeah, you know? it's, it's I've gotten into the idea of a yellow sky, uh, and I wanted to use that. Yeah. Uh, and then I like, and go use yellow skies and on you know the the castle has a yellow sky and it's kind of like a yellow sky you know looks natural in some instances but that, that's kind of interesting why not have a yellow sky you know I was, um, because i want a sense of imminent doom or just like in the uh, hobby scapes to me, these clouds look more like smoke because I've never seen clouds like that. Yeah, well, it's just not just that; it's just the configuration of the clouds. It's, not, it's, it's like they're all broken up into. Well, the the same clouds that were the others. I just decided to make them black. But you oh, know, if you get if you get a bright light, you know, I mean, maybe not like this, but yeah. in the evening, I, I again. Well, you I, observe I, things. I know that, and that's right. That, 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 I think if I had seen that, I was like, wow. <laughs> but you saw the wow before, and it, it made it real to me. In other words, I, um. Do you think people can learn to draw when they're born with it? That's what I teach you when people learn to draw. <laughs> you can say no. That's an awkward question. Can you just want to state it right away? If you're going to go. <laughs> well, we can talk offline about that. I, I think I would rather talk offline about that. <laughs> I think drawing every day, you get better. And um, I've seen remarkable. You know, and actually, I don't know. I have a friend who worked for EPA. She was an undergraduate. And we, I was drawn, I think, you know, she loved color. She sewed. And I, we became really good friends in college. And she always, I went, she always had this deep appreciation for color. And um, she started drawing late in life. And she did a lovely pastel that, you know, she took a course and the woman said, do something interesting with color. And I thought, you know, why am I? In this business, if you in your midlife can sit down and somebody just say, do something interesting with color. Mm -hmm. And actually, she does draw well and she does do nice drawings. So, see, I think that was in her all along. Well, I, I don't know, but I was just thinking, whoa, what am I doing in the education business? I was happy for her. You know, I like what she does. And, Only well, appears your new life business. I hope only my student work can tell them. Well, you'll have to tell everyone about the gallery and how students have art in the gallery. Oh, yeah. Um, 
a pitch for Giles Gallagher, which I'm the director of. And that is just, you know, it's, uh, I have people come in and it's saying uh, an unknown resource. resource. It's in the Gina Campbell building across from Urban Park in Richmond. There's a paid parking lot. You go online to www.art.edu.edu, they will have the gallery hours. Like I said, we had a national jury show there. Uh, just it's gone now, but we we're hosting the Bluegrass Regional High School show, and after that, the ASA jury show. So, and then the BFA exiting shows, but in the fall, we had a lot of really interesting shows. October, we usually like that. If we can get a, a special show there, like we hosted Quilting Book here a couple of years back. Where we have regional art, folk artists come in and show their work. And next year we're having, in October, we're having something on the Holocaust, mementos and letters and things from Holocaust survivors. So, and then we have art artists with individual shows in the fall. So yeah, it's a great thing. If I say so myself. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.